by Sri Lanka's best internet package for online learning and online working with many amazing offers. Call 1212 for more information. Sri Lanka Telecom. Lenka, tu kuma wedi karaga ne? Lao ju rupyal pan hata du kala. Mama, en api te ekak bom. Tonight, deja vu. Government schools closed for a week as health authorities ensure that all is done to stop a second wave of COVID-19. More emphasis. Dr. Palita Kohana rings more alarm bells over the MCC compact agreement. Status quo. The election commission chief says that the polls will go ahead as planned. Consequences. The three police officers involved in the Lunava shooting interdicted. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine this Sunday, the 12th of July, 2020. Nava Sunlight Sakura, then Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Mal Suandin. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhamma Kekanaka. Let's start with your local stories. Now, the chief epidemiologist of the epidemiology unit reassures the people that despite tests and analysis showing that there is a risk of a second wave of COVID-19, health authorities have taken all necessary measures to prevent it from manifesting. After taking the current COVID-19 situation into consideration, the Minister of Education meanwhile announced today that all government schools will close from tomorrow until the 17th of July. The Minister also requested that all private and international schools and tuition classes to also follow suit and in fact keep them closed as stipulated by the Ministry. Now with rumours circulating on social media of the government declaring a three-day holiday, Director General of the Government Information Department, Nalika Kaluweva, took to Twitter to dispel the rumour that it is completely false and no such decision has been taken. 94 fresh COVID-19 cases were reported in Sri Lanka today. The Government Information Department announced that 76 of them were transferred from the Kandakadu Rehabilitation Centre to the Senapura Rehabilitation Centre. 14 of today's cases involved staff members of the Kandakadu Rehabilitation Centre, while the remaining four are from the area of Rajanganeyaya, who are relatives of the soldier who served as a counsellor at the Kandakadu Rehabilitation Centre. In the meantime, a total of 57 COVID-19 infections were confirmed in the island yesterday. According to the epidemiology unit, 13 among them are inmates of the Kandakadu Rehabilitation Centre, 30 are staff members of the Rehabilitation Centre, while 9 are close contacts of inmates. The remaining 5, however, are recent Sri Lankan returnees. Meanwhile, with a soldier of the army serving as a counsellor at the Kandakadu Rehabilitation Centre testing positive along with his two children yesterday, 52 of his close contacts have been subjected to PCR tests. According to the North Central Provincial Director of Health Services, 12 test results have come back positive for COVID-19. Among them are the wife, relatives and close contacts of the soldier who tested positive for the virus. Ongi palemu asyiknya, mewenang kote midalle hari saga ni kawal aku agen ini sanda ha, api sahukis lewa ada sebagai jalanan itu dan muat kelat iya nama, muli ka wajib kita agen labah ini lese, kote sehari sehari ini mew badi benda cara macam mew barang mew roge, bovi mew hakki awat tiada ni sa. Eka ni sa mew mohote mewenang kote sahuk kali tu, apakah ada kepanti, jawa game mew pasal parati mew khati itu, jawa game mew ekar asih ini mew bena karta agen, natra kiri mew sahuk kali tu aku mew lagi niu desa. In the meantime, another counsellor at the Kandakadu Rehabilitation Centre residing in the area of Hinetigale in Habaradua tested positive for the novel coronavirus yesterday. Biological samples of 14 of the counsellor's close contacts, including his mother and wife, were obtained today and their test results returned negative. Meanwhile, two persons that tested COVID-19 positive in Polonarwe and one person in the area of Lankapura have been identified as counsellors who are employed at the Kandakadu Rehabilitation Centre. Following the counsellor residing in Lankapura testing positive for COVID-19, health authorities took measures to direct 66 persons of 18 families residing in the villages of Jayabima, Patunugama, 
Devala Godella and Nelumpura in Lankapura to self-quarantine. According to the Epidemiology Unit, 477 persons have tested positive for the virus so far since the first infection at the Kandakad Rehabilitation Centre was confirmed on the 7th of July. Kandakadu Punuta Padamadestane Nevasiki Kare Mandale Sahai Kare Mandale Samhara Nyatin Me Pokuratula Samasta Kwashen Gatham Rogin Hara Sigatasan Pramana Kwarta Latino. Api Rogin Hantunagata Apideka Rogin Samhara Gedavalta Gedaradi Itapase Samaj Kriakari Tenisa Tamunga Salvas in Nadme Rogi Bovilatino May Ostatino Parikana Saha Age Manu Me Devan Kalak Bota Pati Me Awadana Mak Yamkis Tarmakatino Namut E Manao Pal Nekalati Namut may be the Tamapi Tawat Tanaka, Api Handuna Nogat Rogi Ketu, and Nathan in the Venerella Christmatuime, or Danamita Vedi. In other developments, the country's overall number of active COVID 19 cases rose to 620 today. With one person being given the all clear, the country's total number of virus recoveries rose to 1,981. Meanwhile, authorities also took measures to disinfect the Valicata prison premises following confirmation of two COVID-19 infections from within the prison. The Nagari Tula City Randavian, Harsia Hatalis Hatarodinik, Apini Roda and Katus Sandaha, Yavalatina, PCR Parishional in Passe, Kandakadu, Tambin. To the Hamuda Kanduri, Pihiti, Biroda and Bandiastan, Eta, Punani, Emakandurata, Bandanagar Randavian, Bandanagar in Bandanagar and Marukini Matnavatalatino. Meanwhile, taking the latest virus situation into account, the Ministry of Education announced today that all government schools will be closed from tomorrow until the 17th of July. Releasing a statement, the Ministry stated that an information centre has also been set up under the Deputy Director of Education to collect information on the spread of the virus to schools, which can be reached via the hotline 1988. Taking the current situation of the country into consideration, additional secretary to the President for Foreign Relations, Admiral Professor Jayanath Kolambage said that all repatriation efforts will be temporarily halted until the 14th of July. Now the Navy has apprehended four persons in the seas north of Thondamana in Jaffna over an illegal migration operation. Now, reportedly, a craft attached to the Northern Naval Command had investigated a dinghy 11 nautical miles off Thondamana North when the arrests were made. Two Sri Lankans on board had been attempting to migrate from India, while the other two had crossed international maritime boundary lines to provide transport for the illegal migrants. The two illegal migrants have been identified as previous residents of Velvetitore and Mulathiv. One among them has been identified as a former LTT militant and had been admitted to the Jaffna Teaching Hospital over COVID-19 symptoms. The other migrant too is suspected to be an LTTE activist. Moving on with other stories, former ambassador and Sri Lanka's former permanent representative to the United Nations, Dr. Palita Kohona, urges the government to be careful when dealing with the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact of the U.S. in its current form. Speaking during the launch of a book titled Foreign Policy Perspectives After COVID-19 recently, Dr. Kohona warned that the agreement is lopsided in favour of the US as it gives immunity to the US side with the freedom to legitimately walk away from uh, walk away from the agreement at any moment without reason, leaving Sri Lanka in the lurch with no one accountable for half-completed projects. A book titled Foreign Policy Perspectives After COVID-19, containing contributions from a host of eminent personnel in the country and edited by former Ambassador, President's Council Sarat Vijay Singha was launched recently at the Organization of Professional Associations. Sri Lanka itself has concluded over 900 treaties. The current constitution of Sri Lanka does not deal extensively with treaties. And uh, at a different occasion, we will propose amendments to the current constitution so that treaties will be covered to a greater extent by our constitution. At the moment, we have only marginal references to treaties and uh, many of us feel that that is not adequate. Dr. Palita Kohona also touched on the MCC compact agreement. Sri Lanka follows the dualist approach like many other countries. It basically means that in our approach, there is a difference between national law and international law, a critical difference, I might add, and requires the translation of international law into the domestic arena. Without this transition, 
international law cannot exist in our domestic arena. And this is something that we have to remember. Given that Sri Lanka subscribes to the dualist model, it is understandable that the draft MCC compact requires the compact to be submitted to and enacted by the parliament. The Article 7 of the MCC is the article that I am referring to. One can also detect the influence of the US specialist lawyers who participated in the drafting in the way this particular clause has been formulated. The MCC compact itself is of treaty status. Article 6, Section 6 says that this compact is an international agreement and as such shall be governed by international law. It is also intended to create legally binding rights and obligations. It is important to note that the MCC provisions are carefully drafted and include a sunset clause. Article 7 of the compact says that the compact shall remain in force for five years after its entry into force unless terminated under, art, under Section 5. It also contains provisions on termination, and that's Section 5, a critical uh, section. Either party may terminate this compact without cause, without cause, in its entirety by giving the other party 30 days prior notice. The MCC may also, the MCC may in this instance, may also terminate this compact or the MCC funding without cause, in part by giving the government 30 days prior notice. This provision would enable a party to terminate the MCC for reasons that would be purely political. That is where the risk for Sri Lanka lies. The US could walk away perfectly, legitimately in accordance with the provisions of the compact without incurring any liability, even for political reasons. In a vaguely parallel situation, in 2007, the US withdrew the MCC offer made after the tsunami for exactly such political reasons. The MCC draft, as it stands, would enable the US to adopt a similar approach also without incurring any liability for resulting loss or damage. Very importantly, the MCC explicitly provides immunity to the government of the USA, the MCC, its employees and contractors. Now this is very important, this provision, because it clearly states that the MCC could walk away from its commitment at any time for any reason or no reason. And then if it does walk away, imagine there's a road being constructed and it has gone halfway. Who's responsible for completing it? Who's responsible for any damage that have been, might have been caused riparian owners of property? The US is not responsible because the compact says that. And we will agree to that as it stands. And that is a danger in this. We will see you shortly after this break. Stay tuned. Corona virus e petriyam valakwan na saban yudha dayat sodan na. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Deshapri, states that there are no plans of yet to postpone the general election. In the meantime, postal voting will start from tomorrow. The 13th of July is declared as a special postal voting day for persons affiliated to MOH officers. The 14th and 15th of July are, however, declared normal postal voting days. Meanwhile, the 16th and the 17th of July are dedicated for those affiliated to district secretariats, election secretariats, the police, security forces and the Department of Civil Defence. As for those who are unable to cast their vote on those four days, they are being given another opportunity to do so on the 20th and the 21st of July at the election secretariat in the relevant district where their place of employment is located. 705,085 public servants in total are eligible to cast their postal votes in the general election. With less than a month to go until the country goes to polls to elect its 16th parliament on the 5th of August, election campaigning is in full swing.
With that being the case, however, General Secretary of the Sri Lanka, Podujana Perumuna, Attorney at Law Sagara Kariwasam said that a decision has been made to temporarily halt all of the election propaganda rallies of the party and its alliance. Accordingly, all propaganda activities on the 13th, the 14th and the 15th, for which the President and the Prime Minister was due to attend, have been cancelled. National organiser of the SLPP, Basil Rajpaksha, has meanwhile requested from all candidates to limit their meetings and pocket meetings. If such meetings are to go ahead, SLPP national organiser has insisted that they be conducted with strict adherence to health protocols. What's more, leader of the SLPP, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha, calls on all the candidates of the party to strictly adhere to health protocols and guidelines when engaging in their election campaign activities. Issuing a communique, the Prime Minister requested that social distancing be observed, set up meeting premises in line with health authorities' instructions to make it mandatory for attendees to wear face masks and to limit high number of people from gathering during campaign events. In the meantime, Chairman of the Election Commission Mahinda Deshapre said today that the decision taken to go ahead with the polls has not been changed. <laughs> एक ही वेना सकने हैं, वेंडा दिया बुझे रहा मैं जान देती है ना। ये जब मैसेज वाले में प्रचार कर रही है तो मौका नेवती माँ करी माँ करी बस सीमा की माँ किया दिया उसने तो ना आप ही को हमारे सीमा कर लाने थी बुने वही जो अनिल जासिंग का मात में केला दे उना सामाने रस सीमा सीआई ना है केरन हम पाल सीआई मीटर तेज़ बाल लक्ष्यन साहा ये वाले साहब आगे ना आधार का रोन तुम्हारे वक्त क्या नो इधर ही ना कोई प्रश्न है हमारे जिन पराना कुन हर इधर ही मेथिवर के इधर कोई इधर बाला पाए कोई इधर आप बाला पाए नहीं चंदे दिए ना now, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksha believes that the objective of the tussle between the United National Party and the newly formed Samagi Janabalavege is to secure power at Sirikota and it does not extend as far as the country's governance. Speaking on the campaign trail, the Prime Minister also brushed aside the notion of SJB leader Sajid Premadasa coming to power, pointing to his dismal record at, man at managing the cu Central Cultural Fund. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha joined a public gathering in support of the Colombo district candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna Gamini Lokuge, which was held today in the area of Piliandala. The former Chief Minister of the Western Province, Isura Deva Priya, also received the membership of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna from the Prime Minister. <laughs> Yam-yam piyawaran api dega handa siddha vila tiyo. Kod api dena tama tiyindu kara samar rasi matra kara handa. Ete indala. Was keep yam. Kataka tawal te revate depa. Pala ne kare gen tiyo dena ta. Nuhu tapi parishang vima api waga ki makka yutu kama. In the meantime, Prime Minister Raj Paksha also joined a public gathering that was worked off in the area of Valigama last evening. Anu naan sila dhan nao viduri bila gata gaya. The car is chayi gata gaya. Yodar vahari maa se bila gata maa gaya gaya. Bila pata kula amata maa gaya. Apiwa pata kaya gaya. Jabarwari bahasa bila kamu nak selagi ayat, ikat jiwan lah. Jadi kita tu bahasa. Ini nampi sahaja dia nak kita kami mikir sih, you know, mama tak ada ni hilang lagi. Mama ni kebatang dah. Ya lah mata kerindu, tak kau tu kerindu, ni anjo ada kerana ni. Ya anjo ada kerana ni. Kota begi, pratibati, main dengan apa sahaja pratibati, main dengan cinta, jangan tak ada pratibati. Bisida, 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 bisida. Oh, ini sajit ini. Sajit itu kan arah itu dah. Bal ni kerana dia beri macam ini, amni rata ya arti ke bal ni kerana itu. Ikan bina segala pahala, ada nazar di bahagian dal. Besi kiat ni, kasi kiat ni, apa ni? Pansal, bal ni kalau sama hari orang dia tu nak kopi kan? Laksa hari sih, mana hari dia tak tisha nak dia nak dia. Asal kalau lagi musuh, bal ni aku kerana beri nang tamang di sajit itu kan arah itu. Ia ada rata ke arti ke sama hari ni kerana dia punya dia punya arah itu. Umi sajit dia ni siri putih ni mana sih? Orang buat lah ni ni. Dan mata dia ni pas ni dia ni ni para di paksan ayat kau tu ni dia kau log ni. Kan dah ni mana sih? Sambandnya ni ni dia waktu naik ke ni dia dia mati ni macam ni. Leader of the Samagi Janabalavega, Sajid Premadasa, meanwhile concedes that the former government in which he was a cabinet minister lacked a definitive vision which led to its collapse. His comments came during a party meeting in Gaul yesterday. Premadas also blamed the present government over the latest spike in COVID-19 cases while addressing another event in Akurasa.
A political authority meeting of the Samagijana Balavege of the Akuras electorate was worked off yesterday in the area of Poramba. Apikia Sitia, Menati Varane Pakatan Dinia, Indukanakota, Karuna Karla Vagabala Ganda, Corona, Devini Ralla, Tungani Ralla, Enaman, Eadal, Nitime, Kala Vakuan, Tula, Avasana Madinia make at Laba then they kill up Balagiri Maka. Ea Hidua, Deshapal, Vasitaka. Mehma illim balapam karanai here. Ada satte out of the villa tibe. Corona, the veniral leneway, tumeniral leneway, rally the Hayaka, what come up now? Egulon tuna, a tunin de gun. May deveni corona relata. May Vartaman Raja see at a luxavaria Pagakian at home. In the meantime, a program of the SJB with the business community was worked off under the patronage of the party leader Sajid Premadasa in Gaul yesterday. Manghitanne apita varadunu thenathamai didas pahalve janadi pativarne in pasuva apay rajya thula abhyantar ekangata vyakti bunne yana gaman marge pidi bandu samahar avastavan maladi bohuma aavata gya aavata thamai pratipatte me tindu gatte ne mama dakka dakka thamai sadhu dhatta tindu ganna angaharuwa da cabinet ke thi ena cabinet ke impasse tindu vinasse ena saunda gatta tindu badada ena koru vinasse la indi ekada pradhana thamai hetu thamai apay rajya thula dakma pili bandava yana gaman pili bandava nishita thavyakti bunne I think me Merate cabinet take it into the end of the Hidia Veluhama. After the Hidagan Puluang, I may even go to Mediada and Rata Sulumadiada and Rata Bauta Patilati. Leader of the United National Party, Ranil Vikramasinghe, meanwhile, is critical of the government, saying that the present spike in COVID 19 cases could have been averted had the government heeded his warnings. Speaking in Kandy, former Prime Minister cautions that the effects of a second wave of the virus would plunge the already critical economy into chaos. Leader of the United National Party, Rani Lukramasinghe, called on the chief prelate of the Malvata chapter, Most Venerable Tibbatuave Sri Sumangalatera, at the Malvata temple in Kandy today. <laughs> Vikramasinghe then joined a public event at the auditorium of the E.L. Senanayaka Children's Library in Kandy that was worked off in adherence to health and safety protocols. Basil Mamaki with the Ekaran on a me, Tika Katu to make him beer in the Tibuna. Mirate Corona Tarjana Avahama, Jana di Poetuma Kriakara, Vahama, Corona Tarjane Nisa, Mirate Vadakatu to Navatan. Eko Hundai, Egan Mata Prasnian name. A pit take a Sahayogi Duna. Peke Minus Mata Kaga, who am a deal da no kill. Etena the Magili Matibuna. Karuna Kala Parikshana Pathanaka Patangan. Mokadare, Chande diha Balla. Hadisi Magin Rupia Panda Habedu. Eat a passe chande, we got a tianto munauna. Matthew and a commission to Benna, Doskiwa, Parikshana Vipavetu in a South Kamati to me a tama pilitru den in a Loka Banku Sali Walta Mokaduni, Europea Sangami Mudal Walta Mokaduni, a Palavini Corona came passe, a bit of Godena, dollar, million, Hayada Hakoyaganatino. Tika Kitana, the only what I have to not go home to kill, Palamu Matagian, Adjaxa General came with Rakahani and Nepa, Deyosaki, WHA, and what make Columbacare in Nangahanipa. Egulot make a Hanna Kriaka. Then Matthew and a commission make a Saka Chakran, Antio Moti, Hadisi Kalda Nepa, Kalda and Womanan, Demma Katakala, Metawat Mundal Vidankra and Isela Makeru, Netama Parada Kamekin. We will see you once more on the other side of this break. Bear with us. Welcome back. This is First at Night. Now, three police officers involved in the Lunawa shooting incident where a man was killed during a spot check have been interdicted following investigations. A police sergeant and the two police constables have been interdicted in this manner by the Acting Inspector General of Police, C.D. Vikramaratma. Police said that these steps have been taken in view of the findings of the internal investigations carried out by the Mount Lavinia Senior Superintendent of Police into the incident. On Friday night, a 39-year-old fisherman was shot dead by officers of the Angulana Police Station during an altercation in the Lunava of Moratua. 
The post-mortem was carried or more like conducted yesterday at the Kalubowila Teaching Hospital, which revealed that the fisherman in question had been shot in the head. Residents have charged that the police officers had been drunk at the time of the incident. Now in the fresh week commencing in the stock market tomorrow, a panic mindset with a slow decline in the indices is expected, with foreign sentiment also expected to be on the selling side. Sri Lankan stocks fell 1.92% last Friday with a spike of infections in the drug rehabilitation centre of Kandakadu. Looking at the upcoming week, we feel that there could be a bit of a panic mindset among the investors in the upcoming week, mainly because of the escalation of the number of COVID-19 patients. Now with that, we saw some selling pressure coming on Friday as well. We feel that uh, further selling pressure could actually go on over the next couple of days as well. However, there will be uh, buying interest also coming in on selected, uh, by selected investors. So we feel that uh, bargain hunters will be waiting to grab the opportunity. So with that, uh, we don't think there could be a significant uh, decline in the index. We are expecting only a, a slow decline in the index and we feel that uh, there could be buying interest coming in, slowing down the decline. So turnover levels are likely to be on to the high levels uh, around the 1 billion mark as we've seen over the last couple of weeks as well. However, if you look at the foreign investors, we feel that there could be continued selling pressure from the foreign investors as we've seen from the point of the reopening of the market. That is mainly because of the uncertainty that is there in the global environment. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.